Good morning. Before we begin Mass today, I am going to review some of the music we're going to be singing. If you want to review along with me, you can get a worship aid and follow together our pre-mass musical review. I'm going to start with our entrance hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. We have used the tune before and we have sung this very hymn a few times before in the last year. It goes... Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son. Hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth began. He comes to break oppression, to set the captive free, to take away transgression and rule it For every foe victorious, he on his throne shall rest from age to age more glorious all blessing and all blessed the tide of time shall never his covenant remove his name shall stand forever his name as his love. That was our entrance hymn. And now if you open your worship page on page two, I'm going to review the Baptist bore witness, our offertory hymn. It goes like this. The Baptist bore witness to God's chosen one, not only a servant, but also God's son. Christ baptized for sinners in lowly I am, not only a shepherd, but also a this Christ now invites us to church here today. Baptized in the Spirit to follow His way. Not only in word, but in love's daily need. With justice and mercy for an And finally, our recessional hymn in the back of our worship aid, When Jesus Came to Jordan, the tune you are going to recognize instantly, we've done it many times, is the tune known as Elacomb. For instance, we sing it with Go Make of All Disciples. It goes like this. Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John. He did not come for pardon, but as the sinless one, he came to share repentance with all who mourn their sins, to speak the vital sin. With which good news begins. We celebrate 
the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant is our pastor, Father Keith. A reminder that our prayer for vocations to the priesthood is always printed in the back of our worship aid. We begin with our entrance antiphon omnis terra adoret. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. Please stand as we begin our celebration, singing our entrance hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Lord 
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Bestow your peace on our times through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to me, You are my servant Israel, through whom I show glory. Now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, the Lord says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sacrifice or offering you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocausts or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Here am I, Lord, I come to your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O oh my God, is my delight. And your law is with 
in my heart. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sosthenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy, with all those everywhere who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. God became flesh and dwelt among us. To those who accepted him, he gave power to become children of God. Hallelujah. according to John. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and remain upon him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, On whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise well, the most intriguing aspect of interacting with the Gospels, which we pro proclaim here at Mass every Sunday, is something beyond their capacity to inform us about the mystery and message of Jesus Christ, or even to instill us with greater faith in him. What's most intriguing is that in our hearing, the four evangelists invite us week after week to see ourselves participating in the gospel stories alongside Jesus himself and those who took part in the events of his life. 
Bible scholars tell us that this phenomenon is particularly true of the Gospel of John, from which we just read. That invitation comes to us in the first line of our Gospel reading. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him. Apart from our sharing what was revealed to John through the work he was commissioned to do, that Jesus is the Lamb of God and the Son of God, who takes away the sins of the world and baptizes us with the Holy Spirit, we are invited, however implicitly, to proclaim in word and action, as John did, whatever may be manifested to us whenever Jesus walks in our direction. Isn't that what we experience through our faith? Jesus coming towards us repeatedly to become part of our lives? For starters, though, how do we react and then behave in proclaiming together with John, as we do at every Mass, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Reciting those words three times before receiving communion should move us to seek pardon for our sins and then to rejoice in his mercy. But on some days, finding ourselves overwhelmed by the stress of leading a good life, or deflated, let's say, by exaggerating our sinfulness, we may feel demoralized by the distance between God's love for us and our failure to love him in return. Although this may be hard for us to believe at times, God never wants us to feel unworthy to receive his love. On the other hand, Whenever we share John the Baptist's unique insight into the divine person walking towards him as the Lamb of God who takes away our sins, or have another perception based on our own encounters with the Lord through the Gospels, in our prayer life, or with the people in our lives, we can be sure that Jesus will manifest himself to us with the same intent to have us know him as was, as was true for John. What is it then that we perceive about Jesus walking toward us? Through the stories of sacred scripture, for instance. Do we see his compassion for friends and strangers alike? Like when, during his travels recounted in Luke's Gospel, he met the widow at Nain, whose only son had died. You remember that story. After telling the widow not to weep, he touched the man's coffin, raised him up, and then, wishing to restore not just his physical life, but every facet of his existence, especially the love relationships that had come to an end. Jesus then gave him to his mother. Are we allowing Jesus to get close enough to us for him to instill that kind of sympathy in us, which could enable the people in our lives who may be paralyzed by grief, like the widow in the gospel, to find the grace to live and to love again? Maybe today we need to ask ourselves, what exactly might Jesus be manifesting about himself to us in our individual lives, in all their unique and peculiar circumstances? Today's Gospel confirms that Jesus made himself known to John the Baptist as the Lamb of God, as Jesus walked toward him. And yet, if it's true that John, the evangelist, invites us to see ourselves in his gospel stories,
And Jesus is appearing to us today, too. Not in his own flesh, of course, except to a few privileged saints. But he appears nonetheless, as St. Teresa of Calcutta made known, in the disguises of the poor, the misbegotten, the alienated, and in all the marginalized members of society whom Jesus loved beyond measure when he walked and worked among them. So, in walking toward us today, might Jesus be prompting us to treat the marginalized as he did? Whether they be people without power or money or status? Or people, for instance, with intellectual and developmental disabilities? I can answer at least the last part of that question because I live with my sister-in-law, Patty, age 50, who's physically and developmentally disabled. Some of you know her. She's about 3 foot 11. And when I see her walking toward me in need of help to go to the bathroom, take a shower, get dressed, or eat dinner, I almost never help her without complaining first muttering under my breath or bemoaning the demands on my freedom. But not my wife, Karen. She lives the words of Jesus, who said in another gospel, when you have done all those things which are commanded of you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. By that principle, among others, my friends, we will be judged. So when at Mass we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Keep us mindful that we are called to spend our lives not only giving thanks to our Lord for his mercy and peace, but for every opportunity to extend the mercy and peace of Jesus to others. Because Jesus, remember, continues to walk into our lives in their footsteps. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all who is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I can believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, Proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world of God. Amen. We now lift up our prayers to the Father with confidence. 
that the church always remain united in spirit and purpose. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That political leaders govern with honesty, justice, and a spirit of service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our community recognizes and upholds the dignity of every human person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the baptized, especially Anthony Maresca, baptized this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, including those listed in the bulletin, and for all our deceased loved ones, including Rose DeJager, Carol Kelly, Joanne Severino, Charles Scalise, and in a special way, for Anthony Minichino, for whom this Mass is being offered. Welcome them into the joy of your kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all the intentions of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you guide us through difficulties and give us strength. We ask you to hear our prayers that we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing our offertory hymn, The Baptist Bore Witness. Baptist or witness to God's chosen one, not only a servant, but also God's son. Christ baptized for sinners, the holy I am, not only a shepherd, but also a lamb. This Christ now invites us to church here today. Baptized in the Spirit to follow His way. Not only in word, but in love's daily need. With justice and mercy for a neighbor Believers called forth to make peace and unite, not only God's servants, but also God's light. Bring hope to the nations, to lands far and near, proclaiming salvation, the King. participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so, the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, we sing to him of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. your glory, O Santa in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Santa in the highest. O Santa in the
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Leonard our Bishop, the clergy and all your faithful. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, especially Anthony Minichino, for whom this Mass is being offered. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, St. John Bosco, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. La 
Lamb of God, you'll take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and the soul shall be You have prepared a table before me. And how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. Sweetness, 
Please join us in singing our meditation hymn, Here I Am, Lord. Make those who have nourished by this one heavenly bread 
one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, you have created us for a definite purpose. Grant us the grace to know the path you have planned for each of us in this life and to respond with a generous yes. Make my parish, my home, and my heart a fruitful ground for your gift of vocations to the priesthood of Jesus Christ. May our young men respond to your call with courage and zeal. Store among them the desire and the strength to be good and holy priests. We make our prayer for greasy vocations to you, Father, in the Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. St. Joseph, patron of our Archdiocese, pray for us. Blessed Michael McGivney, pray for us. Please join us in singing our recessional hymn, When Jesus Came to Jordan. Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John. He did not come for pardon, but as the sinless one, he came to share repentance with all who mourn their sins, to speak the vital sin. Which good news begins. He came to share temptation, but most woe and loss for us and our salvation to die upon the cross. So when the dove descended on him. Yeah. 